Welcome to the Love the Star podcast. I'm Bobby Bell, Dallas Cowboys insider for 105 through the fan of Dallas, joined as always by former NFL scout Brian Broaddus. He is now, uh, he's also a uh, Super Bowl winner. I, I don't want to forget that. He's, he's got it. He's there to remind you with the Green Bay Packers ring tonight. Uh, he is also uh, the co host of the G Bag Nation, 2 to 7 p.m. Central, Monday through Friday on 105 through the fan of Dallas, and the pre and post game co host on the Dallas Cowboys radio network. And Brian, we will be in Oxnard, California. This is going to drop Wednesday morning. So a little bit later on uh, in the day, me in the afternoon, you late in the evening, probably early morning hours, uh, we will be in Oxnard, California for training camp. Uh, CD Lamb is not yet. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Before we do, we did just see a little bit of breaking news as we were coming on the air. Former Cowboys wide receiver Michael Gallup is retiring from the NFL. Wow. Initial thoughts, initial reaction? Michael Gallup was dealing with an awful lot after he hurt his knee. Uh, If we remember, he had a really, I believe he had a great game one year in Atlanta where they won on the last second field goal. Mm -hmm. And Michael played really well. And he was dealing with some family stuff then. And then he suffered the knee injury. And I think that there's a lot of things in Michael's life that he's he's tried to put on a brave face and go forward and keep going and you know and, and doing those types of things and you know he's dealing with the knee injury him and Britt Brown did an incredible job of getting back you know is to a to a, a level where he could play remember the Giants game he didn't feel really comfortable maybe it had something to do with the turf there at the at the stadium that he didn't want to you know chance it that night. But, you know, he he came back and, uh, you know, but, you know, this is obviously one of those decisions that you make when your your heart's really not into it. We've always remembered Bill Purcell saying the minute you talk about retiring, you're retired. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that he is dealing with some things that are that are tough for him. Uh, this is just, like I say, these are just thoughts that I have right now. I haven't talked to Michael Gallup about any of this stuff, but I knew when we interviewed him a couple different times that he was dealing with a lot. Mm-hmm. And I even off, uh, off, uh, Mike, I, I said, Hey man, I, I heard you've gone through some things and he says, you don't know the half of it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So from that point on, I always expected that Michael was doing everything he could to get himself back out on the field and be a productive football player. But, you know, maybe there's some things. Maybe his heart's just not into it anymore. You know, maybe the knee is still bothering him. Maybe, the you know, hey, I don't want to keep playing this game, you know, and, and put my body out there. So, uh, super nice kid. Yep. Uh, one of the best I've ever been around. Always had that type of smile. Uh, when you were around him, uh, you knew he wanted to compete. But like I say, I think there were some things happening in his life that just has not did not allow him to play at the level that we'd seen Michael Gallup play at before. No doubt about it. Uh, some off the field stuff, um, and, and I think a lot of it, the knee injury contributed in a yeah. big way to it. Um, yeah. That knee injury ruined his career, and yeah. and, and he. He was never the same player physically after that, but I think in a lot of ways he was just his psyche was never the same. Mm-hmm. Mentally, he was just not the same player, and, and I just it felt like he didn't trust didn't trust his own health anymore. Never did. Yeah. And 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 I mean there were there were times where, you know, early in a game you'd see Michael Gallup getting an early target uh, that year he came back. That was very much on purpose by the Cowboys. Absolutely. To, to, Let's get him. Let's get him get involved. Him going. Let's, get him going. Let's, let's let's build him up a little yeah. bit. Let's get his confidence going because he needs it. And and there were concerns I think about his his confidence level, and it just it never never rebounded. Never came and, back. And really unfortunate. Um, sweet guy, a really nice guy, um, and a guy who, like you mentioned, had been through a lot and looked to just be on a a really really encouraging traject- trajectory and path after that second year when they had Randall Cobb here and, and Gallup really broke out and, and looked like one of the better deep ball threats in the NFL. So uh, some sad news there as, as that story, uh, that chapter comes to a close. Now, uh, for the Cowboys' current receivers, uh, CeeDee Lamb, 
He is not in. Uh, he is not there in Oxnard yet. Uh, it does not register as a violation or uh, you know being late for camp, being absent from camp until Wednesday afternoon. Uh, but he is not there at the moment, and it does not appear that he will be there anytime soon. Uh, at least barring a contract getting done. And uh, Brian, the there was a really good article that I had seen from Joe Hoyt over at Lone Star Live, who's been on the beat now for about a year. And Joe had done kind of a, a breakdown of what the CBA tells us with Michael Ge- or with uh, CeeDee Lamb and, and what it is that he's potentially on the hook for. So players on veteran contracts are fined $50,000 a day for every day that they miss camp. Players on rookie contracts, like CeeDee Lamb, because this is a fifth-year option, uh, are $40,000 a day. So you've got a little bit of a discrepancy there. For every preseason game they miss, they are subject to a one-eighteenth of their salary fine. So if you make $18 million and you miss a preseason game, you're getting fined a million dollars. So with three preseason games, all these practices, all these various things that could stack up with CeeDee Lamb, you're looking at into the millions of potential training camp fines here. And this is already after $101,000 that he was fined during uh, during the OTA and minicamp period. So pretty significant amount of money. It would be a maximum fine of $3.68 million. But here's the thing that needs to be pointed out or discussed a little bit. Yeah, here's the, here's the kicker. Is that last year we talked about, man, you can't waive these fines on, on Zach Martin. You're going to have to build these into the contract. They're going to cost right. you money. The CBA – speaks differently on players like CeeDee Lamb. Rookie contract. You're on a rookie contract, the team is allowed to waive your fines when you show up. Yes, they are. And if you're on a veteran contract, they're not. They have to build them in. And I assume that was built into place by the Players Association or, or an agreement that the Players Association came to because they thought, look, veterans are going to do their jobs. They've probably already gotten paid once before. Not as big. Whereas with rookies, it was more a question of, circumstance negotiation trying to get their first big payday let's have some wiggle room to allow the team to give that negotiations to waive those fines so in the end cd lamb might not be costing himself anything financially and those fines if, if you're thinking maybe those fines will push the cowboys to get something done quicker because they they don't want to build that into his contract or maybe it'll force cd to get something done quicker because he doesn't want to have to worry about you know addressing those fines that's off the table. That is not a pressure point because, Brian, it, it's not going to cost him anything. When he gets his deal done, the Cowboys, in all likelihood, will just waive those fines. Bobby, you did us all a huge favor by bringing this up because what's going to happen is somebody is going to talk about $50,000 in fines. It's not even $50,000. It's $40,000 but they're going to bring that up as this is a potential sticking point for him and could be problematic Mm -hmm. under the rookie contract. As you so eloquently explained, these all can be waived. So him staying away. Sure. The number is going to add up, but the Cowboys do have the option to be able to do that. And they likely will when he signs a contract. So well done on your part. Well done on the article. Uh, yeah, Joe explain- Hoyt. Great, great job from Joe. Great job from Joe explaining. So when we're all in conversations now with each other, you know, as media, fan base, when you're asking Bobby and I Twitter questions or questions for the Dean Julia mailbag, just know now that these things could be waived because he's under rookie contract. And I think that's something – that we all need to understand right off the jump and great job by everybody involved there. Yeah. Just, it's, it's not the pressure point that it potentially could have been with a guy right. like Zach Martin. Um, and so in, in one way it's like, Oh, this is okay. This is a, a nice thing to know that you you've got this. This isn't going to potentially be an ugly sticking point where, you know, they're, they're fighting over how to address the fines like that. That's a positive in one respect. But on the other side, it's like, yeah, but if you're expecting that to move them at all, yeah. in e- either side, they don't. It's not there. They, not they there. don't need it. And so yeah. 
little bit of a a I, uh, a, a a you know education point there uh, that I think is, is important because a lot of people I think don't realize that aspect of how the contract structure sets up. I'll tell you what I was doing uh, radio on 105.3 The Fan today, being Tuesday, and my radio partner Zach Wolchuk. Zach seemed to have some positivity about this thing de- being done by Saturday. That'd be great. And and I couldn't I couldn't get him to get into it. You know, if you know Zach, Zach was uh, our host of the uh the 3 days of the draft of the draft show uh when we did the actual draft draft. I mean, he's Zach talks to people, hears from people and stuff. So I kind of found found it like, "Well, man, do you want to expand on that?" Mm-hmm. And he goes, no, uh, we'll just just see what happens the next few days. So I saw people tagging you, Bobby, saying that you knew contract T. And they're ah. asking you to spill the tea on some of these contracts. Look. You know what's going on. <laughs> but here I've got you. I got Zach. You know, I've got all these guys that are kind of hinting around. There might be something inevitably happening with these contracts or maybe some movement one way or another. Yeah, I, I don't – I haven't uh, – Lamb is one that you just – I have not heard anything in regards to moving on. Dak, I definitely think – seemed like Calvin Watkins – it seemed like Calvin Watkins is talking to people involved, and he was bringing up that there was no discussions or no I, movement I, or anything like that. So yeah, I'm kinda, I, 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 yeah, I would trust Calvin's plug. I would too. I would too. He's got – Calvin's got a good source on that one. He really, really does. I, I agree. So Calvin is a guy that I would definitely look to for that. Dak, I think there's a better chance that, uh, or, or at least fe- have a better feel that there's movement there at least. I, I don't know if there's lots of progress, but I, I have a better feeling that there is movement there. Adam Schefter said today, Dak Prescott could go north of 60 million a year, well north of 60. So that'll be something uh, fun for us to kick around potentially if that's what it ends up being. Like you Bobby. said, Ryan, it, it, it may be a case where the Cowboys just say, We've lost the negotiation, Dak. You need to now sit down, and we'll show you. Okay, how much do you See, want to be? That's. I wanted to ask you that, Bobby. And I. And sometimes I. Re, I remember what platforms I'm on, and other ones I don't. But I think you and I discussed that. I. I think this is okay. If you're Anna Pacifica, Stephen Jones, and those guys dealing with the contract, you walk Dak Prescott in there, and you do. You tell him, okay, you're going to win here. You're going to win. But how bad do you want to win? Do you want to win this at sixty million? Do you want to win it at fifty-eight? Do you want to win it at fifty-five? Do you want to give us a real break and win it at fifty-two? You know, Dak doesn't owe them anything. He he really really does. His agents done a great job of getting him back to the table, and I'm sure there'll be another situation where they'll probably sign another short contract, and here we go all over again. You know, kind yeah. of a deal. You know, because. Todd France is getting him back to the table. It's very LeBron James NBA like of signing one year deals to order to get him back to the table, particularly quick. So, I but if I'm if I'm Stephen Jones and Adam and them, I I try and bring him in and give him a PowerPoint presentation, like this is what your team potentially could look like if you take this, this, or this. And maybe educate him on, uh, you know, maybe educate him on what is what lies ahead. Yeah, and not that he, not not that he would. He doesn't owe him anything. He no, doesn't. No, no, no. But also that he wouldn't necessarily like like we use the term educate. I, I think he has an awareness of those things and a, yeah. an awareness of those realities. But, but for you the Cowboys, can, but put, you can paint the picture for him for the Cowboys to just put it in the direct terms of I'm telling you we're not signing this guy if you sign yeah. for this. Yeah. Like, like just you you know the difficulties it presents. Yeah. Here is, I'm telling you, here are our decisions. We're letting these guys go if you do this. Yeah. And and if he wants to accept that, he can accept that. If he wants to work on it. He but as long as he it. knows, as yeah. long as he knows, and then it could be in a situation where, you know, if he signs at $60 million and all of a sudden they start letting guys go and the team's not any good, you know, there could always be that, well, we brought him in, we tried to explain. And, and the Cowboys, you know, they, they, they're, they're in a bind right now. They are in a real bind with their contract situation. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something that these challenges are going to exist. And as Demarcus Lawrence once famously said, though, I'm probably with Dax telling him, like yeah. we referenced last episode, it's not my problem. Not That's, my that problem. That is your problem to figure out how to pay your guys. Well, 
Yeah, Stephen right. Jones can admit. Stephen Jones can admit to him that we we've lost it with you. We don't have any leverage. Our only leverage is you wanting to be here. That's our only leverage that we have. I mean, that that you maybe want to be a Dallas Cowboy. That's our only yeah. leverage. Yeah, and I I don't think that moves him the way it once did. Probably doesn't. And, right. and so because of that, it's they probably lost on that point. Yeah. Uh, you are listening to the Love the Star podcast. The Love the Stars and Odyssey podcast. You can find it on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Brian, uh, before we continue on, I do want to remind everybody, uh, as we head out to training camp, we're going to have our, our great sponsor here on Love the Star, Chill Boys. They're going to be partnering up with us uh, on 105 to the Fan on that side as well. Uh, so it's a great time to remind you that as we're out there in California, if you want to support this podcast, if you want to support the work that we're doing all you know, 10 days that we're out there, Brian, for even longer, uh, you're going to want to pick up a pair of Chill Boys. So go to chillboys.com, promo code STAR, that's 15% off, and that's how you show your support uh, to us and what we do here. And uh, we appreciate Chill Boys' support of us, and we appreciate your support of us, and we like to bring those things together. So check it out, chillboys.com, promo code STAR. Brian, Todd Archer. Yeah. Knows, so that's a guy who knows what he's talking about a lot of times. Generally, sure does. I feel like. Yeah, uh, big, that, big that, fan that, of Todd Archer. Yes, pr- pretty pretty trustworthy individual. Uh, Todd Archer put out his fifty three man roster projection like he always does uh, around the start of camp, and so I just wanted to run through some of these highlights with you, get some of your thoughts and and some of your reactions, some of your takeaways uh, before we dive into the specifics of his list and his 53 man roster. I know that before we let the show, you were saying, Hey, when we get into the roster stuff, I, I want to throw a question over to you. So before yeah. we dive into that, hit me with your question and uh, let's kick it around a little bit. Bobby, are there, give me the, are there players on this team that are undervalued? And I mean, undervalued in a way of we've, the month of June is always spent with lists of players, top sure. ranked, top ranked guards, top ranked edges, Top ranked corners. Are there players on this team that the national media is undervaluing? Um, yeah, probably. Like, I, okay, when they released the cornerback list last week, the front office and executive Duran Bland's way too low to me. There you go. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think you can have any excuse for essentially having Duran Bland as the twentieth best corner in football. Jair Alexander was up there on reputation. That that's not as good of a football player as he once was. Sure. Uh, I I don't think even the the issues that exist with Bland, which he's not a perfect player, right? He is not he is not anywhere close to the gambling and you know burned moments that existed with Trayvon Diggs a couple of years ago. Sure. Nowhere close, and yet he's getting the same sort of ball production in a lot of ways, and so I, I think Bland is pretty underrated. Uh, I think people are still waking up to Jake Ferguson and and who I he agree. is. I agree. Um, and, and I think because the the raw numbers aren't there, a lot of people don't know how good of a player Oso Digizua is. We've talked before. I like what you're saying here. We've talked before about maintaining, you know, fatigue and and some of those issues yeah. and and just making sure that he's you know got enough juice left at the end of the year. But I think in terms of as a quality player the league hasn't necessarily caught up to what kind of a player he is. Um, but yeah, I think those are probably the three that stand out to me. And Bland is just more, I wouldn't have thought that name other than just when I've seen some of these lists lately that seem yeah. to be disrespecting him. Yeah. I kind of think the national media do not have a very good handle on Ferguson. They don't have a very good handle on Bland. Bland is a Bland would he starts for the Cowboys, no doubt, but every team in the National Football League would love to have a Deron Bland on their team. Yeah. His ability to play outside, play inside. He might even be play inside better than he plays outside. I think Oso Digizua is a guy that when you start to talk about if he could figure out how to get himself past week 13 into week 14, into week 15, into week 16, you know, there is a he, – he plays at such a high level for like 13 weeks – and then it becomes a little bit of a struggle for him. But I think he's vastly underrated as a defensive tackle. And I think he's going to show you that this year. Yeah, absolutely. I think that those are the ones that really stand out. And look, in a lot of ways, the guy that might be undervalued is a guy that we might be undervaluing because we're not even thinking of him. And we we don't think of him as, as necessarily – whoever that may be. Just, yeah. I mean, like maybe it's a – who 
you know, you could Tyler throw, Smith, Tyler Smith undervalued in a little bit. I don't think so. I mean, he was an all pro last year. Second sure. But I mean, um, the national, the national media. Uh, no, I, I think Tyler Smith has gained a, a decent reputation at this point. Um, but like, I mean, maybe here locally, like, do we, do we always have an appreciation necessarily of how good I still think Brandon cooks is like, I don't, I don't think Brandon cooks is top of the league, but I think people have way oversold his lack of production as a talent problem. When I think a lot of ways it's been a fit problem or just where they're going with the ball. I think the, with, with cooks, I think they asked him to take over the Gallup role towards the end of the season last year with the inside routes, the slants and the stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't think that's his cup of tea. I don't think no. running big guy routes, the slants, he could do the crossing stuff and all you know, they wanted to get Gallup involved in those fourth down throws and stuff like that and drags and stuff like that. And then they couldn't get him the ball. He couldn't get open. He wasn't secure enough. And all of a sudden, then it became Cook's responsibility. Cook's is one of the best I've seen in a long time when it comes to lining him up on one side of the field and running him as a as a, like an arrow route across the deepest part of the – yeah, the deepest part of the of the secondary – and he starts on one side and ends up on the completely on the opposite side. And I, that's, that's his game, man. Yeah. But I mean, I'll, I'll say this. I don't, I think he does play for a smaller guy. I think he plays bigger. Like, well, I, 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 I do. Jair think- Alexander, the interception that, you know, the inside route in the Green Bay game, you know, there were a couple of times there where he got whacked pretty yeah, good. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, why? This should be Michael Gallup, and it's not. It's Cooks, you know. And you're like, why? Because they couldn't. They couldn't. Tolbert couldn't do it, you know. They couldn't find somebody to do it. So what they do? They 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 threw, they threw Cooks in there and said, okay, I'm sorry, you're going to have to do these routes. I yeah. think that I think that hurt him a little bit. Yes, it, it did absolutely. And also, you got to remember there were times he was getting open and the ball was just not going to. Not him. just going um, his way. Yeah. Whether it be because. They were going to CD and CD made a play and there were options on the play, or sometimes he was missed. Um, but I will say that I know the Green Bay game was not great for him in that respect. And the Green Bay game was not great for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but I do think that there were times throughout the season. Giants game stands out to me opening day. Um, there was a, a play against the Chargers that was similar that I do think that some of the tough yards over the middle slant stuff. He plays bigger and and is willing to stand in there with toughness and finish catches and and doesn't doesn't let himself get bullied out of place consistently i do i know there are some limitations and it happened a lot against green bay but i do think that he's savvy enough and tough enough that he's able to still play in that space in a pinch you just don't want him doing it all the time like they were essentially asking him to do at the end of the year um taking a look at this 53 man roster let's try to run through uh just some of these names really quickly uh before we get to the mailbag uh, Todd Archer has the Cowboys keeping three quarterbacks, Dak Prescott, Trey Lance, Cooper Rush, uh, and he has Trey Lance listed as the number two quarterback on the depth chart in this instance. Uh, he mentions that if Trey Lance plays well, maybe he becomes their quarterback in the future or he becomes trade bait. I think that's kind of how we all feel right now, that this this training camp is an audition for Trey Lance. It's either an audition for the QB1 job here in Dallas or it's an audition for his next team. Agreed. Next one here, you look at the running back room. Brian, this is going to make a lot of people upset. It's got Ezekiel Elliott, Rico Dowdle, Royce Freeman, Deuce Vaughn, and then the fullback Hunter Lipke, five backs there. But five backs might make some people upset. What might make people more upset is Ezekiel Elliott there at the top of the depth chart. But that's, that's I think, where we all feel like things are leaning at the moment. Um, that I think Zeke may start games even and still not finish with the most carries. It by you know a guy on the roster, Dowdle may have more carries in certain games, but I think this is absolutely Ezekiel Elliott's starting job at the moment. Kind of feel like that maybe the third running back on this team isn't here. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. That that okay, Royce Freeman, respect. Seen his name a bunch here lately. Like what Todd's trying to do here. 
kind of feel like it might be it might be three backs and Hunter Lipke is what I think. Yeah, because they might very well could to, be. They might need to go longer at maybe they might go longer at tight end than they would running back. So let's and they're uh, and they're, and they're not going to need because if you carry if you carry four running backs and then the fifth one being Hunter Lipke, I think you're one too many. You know, so I'm going. I'm going to say that's that's a position. I don't know Royce Freeman if they do decide to carry five backs, then I kind of feel like that whoever's the fifth or the fourth back is maybe in another team. Let's. Uh, we would typically jump over to receivers. We'll do that in a sec. Well, let's go to tight ends first because you just mentioned the tight end group. Uh, Todd has them running light there. Three tight ends. See, that's. I think they're going to probably go long. Jake Ferguson. Yeah. Luke Schoonmaker. Yeah. You want to guess who your third is? John Stevens. John Stevens. That's correct. Do you want to guess who Todd lists as the sleeper candidate to be the fourth tight end? I wonder if he would do something. He's probably going to do something with Span Ford. No, it's it's the guy we mentioned last time, a guy Dak Prescott has invested in, if you watch him out of practice, Princeton Fant. Okay. And Pr- Princeton Fant's a guy that when you watch Dak, we talked about this last episode. Sure. Dak at these practices rides him and is just on top of like, man, come yeah. on, you got to be here, you got to do this. So that means Peyton Hendershot, as it stands now, according to Todd, completely out of the picture. I don't it's have, just, I would not have him on my 53. It's not I, even a discussion. I've got, I've got a lot of dirt on top of him right now. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, receivers, he's got five. C.D. Lamb, Brandon Cooks. Third receiver, he has his Jalen Tolbert. I know you and I have talked about Brooks. I've said that I think Brooks can seize that third receiver job. I don't think he's opening camp with it, but I think he can absolutely take it. Uh, fourth receiver, Cavante Turpin. And then the fifth receiver, snatching a spot here, is Jalen Brooks. Uh, so he does have Jalen Brooks making the roster as the fifth receiver. Mm-hmm. He says that the Cowboys believe Tolbert is more than ready to be their number three receiver. I think that's something that, Brian, for you and I, we're going to need to see that out in Oxnard because we have not seen it yet. Yeah, Todd. Todd's moved on from Florida away. Mm-hmm. So that's probably a practice squad situation right there. The learning curve might be too steep for him at this point. Yeah, Flournoy also last year was supposed to be his breakout year. He broke his hand. Yeah. And he was limited on what kind of reps he could get. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if the Cowboys strategically just think teams don't know what to think of him. He's and so we, 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 can, yeah. we can hide him a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Uh, next year, he's got him going heavy on the offensive line. Uh, 10 offensive linemen, which is deeper than they typically carry. I, I don't have a problem with this because I don't I either. Know from my own experience, and I and folks, the last time I sat in a draft room or war room or whatever was 2005. But my experience working in pro personnel was that I couldn't find offense and defensive linemen on the street. So – Always was convinced going long at both offense and defensive line helped me. So if I had an injury, I didn't have to go raid a practice squad or sign somebody off the street. I had somebody that I actually liked and maybe developed a little bit. Todd has uh, Guyton as the starting left tackle, which we've talked about Guyton versus. I think he. I think he needs to be there from the jump. I, 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 that's where I would put him. I just, I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on that just because I know, the I know way you are. Coach, I know you are. I, I just know the way the coaching staff. Feels oh yeah. About no, better. you're not. You're not wrong. totally, totally could be. We could walk out there first practice and Guyton is out there. I'm not, I'm not ruling that out. I'm mm-hmm. just saying that I, I, I feel like the way this coaching staff works, I wouldn't be surprised. Sure. Guyton, Tyler Smith, Brock Hoffman winning the center job, Zach Martin, Terrence Steele, then the reserves, Chuma Idoga, Cooper BB, TJ Bass, Awesome Richards and Nathan Thomas. That means this is the end of the road for Josh Ball and Matt. Well, let's go in Todd's scenario. And it should be. Probably. Definitely Ball. Um, well, let's go definitely. I think Well, let's go needs to, uh, you know, further himself along a little bit. I, I wondered how much patience they have with the idea of just, though, the subluxation and the athlete that they believed he was. When he was first coming out, Solari is a different kind of coach. Though this was Solari was not Solari didn't was not here when they picked Matt Walletsko. Yeah. Uh, next one here, defensive line. He's got nine, and he does not, uh, or he, he does have Michael Parsons in this, including this nine. Demarcus Lawrence, Oso Digizua, Mozzie Smith, Micah Parsons, Sam Williams, Marshawn Nealon, 
Chauncey Golston, Carl Davis, and Junior Fajoko. Uh, he mentions Parsons is listed as a linebacker, but he is an edge player. Could be moved around a lot. Um, he mentions that Mozzie Smith has to deliver. Cowboys could still look for veteran defensive tackle I agree. help. I agree. Which is why Davis gets the last spot for now. Interesting note here. He says Junior Fajoko, a fourth-round pick last year, could be trade bait and will have to impress early on after not playing as a rookie. Is that an instance, Commanders. Of, his, is that Commanders. An instance of his sponsors out of the building? Yeah, sponsors out of the building. I will say this. I think Justin Rogers over Carl Davis. He, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Did he have? He, he didn't have Justin. Rogers. No, 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 no. But I'm just saying, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you're right on that. That it goes Justin to Rogers. Rogers over Carl Davis, in my book. The linebacker group here: Brian, Eric Kendricks, Damone Clark, Demarvian Overshone, Maris Leafal, and then the surprise uh, XFL or UFL edition that we had talked about previously: uh, Willie Harvey uh, makes the roster here uh, for Todd Archer. I saw John Mashota had Willie Harvey on there as well. Um, you know, Todd mentions Kendricks is the biggest addition this season because of his knowledge of Zimmer's defense, how excited they are for DeMarvey and Overshone. Says it's time for Clark to be a consistent playmaker. And he says, don't rule out Damian Wilson if the Cowboys choose yeah. to go six linebackers. Yeah, so the- I, I, a veteran guy there for sure. I, the thing with Clark, he always is going to need somebody next to him that can help him. Yeah. He's not an instinct. He's, his instincts are not, I'm using the word instinctual. He's not an instinctual player. Yeah. He's just not. He's going to always need somebody that can help him with formation and then where to go and where to react. And it's, it's just the way he plays. You know, he is a, he might be the best athlete of the linebackers, but in a group that has really top in football IQ intelligent type stuff. And I mean this in no disrespect to the kid. I'm not calling him dumb. I'm just saying it's he doesn't read as fast as the other ones. And you have to be able to read fast in Mike's system. Yeah, and instincts a lot of times to me, like like you said, you're not saying he's dumb. Instincts a lot of time is, is almost feel. It's just almost like a sixth sense. It's, it, it is it, Tank it, Lawrence it, on fourth and one knifing inside, jumping the snap count. There have been some really great, I think, guys in terms of uh, students and the way they study and and they had to study to get the because they they don't just naturally have a little bit of that feel it's not that they're bad students or bad work ethic it's just they don't have that natural feel for the right. game it's almost like muscle memory I corners agree. there are five of them on here brian Diggs, deron bland jordan lewis kaylin carson maybe a bit of a surprise your second ufl player gary on conley he has making the roster here over eric scott jr uh, you know, we've talked about other guys who could be uh, competing there in the secondary. Uh, interesting note here. He says it's up in the air after a bit after the top three. And we talked about this a little bit last episode. He says, which means a return of Stefan Gilmore can't be ruled out. Yeah. And I, we all know we talked about this when we mentioned it last time. They like him. They did not have any bad taste in their mouth when Stefan Gilmore left here. They really respected him. It was just, you know, opportunity versus cost and everything else. And, if you're sitting around in training camp and he doesn't have a job, that might change things for him a little bit. Yeah, and now here we go once again, Nashawn Wright. Yep. Right. Uh, being gone. Uh, Israel McQuamu, I think, is more of a safety than he is a corner. So, uh, but both those guys, I don't know if you have him in the safety group, which I assume you don't. Let's look at the safeties. There are four of them. Yeah. Malik Hooker, Donovan Wilson, Marquise Bell, and Wanye Thomas. There you go. He says uh, Hooker is the center field type. Wilson more yeah. the hitter, but it has a nose for the ball. Bell moved to linebacker last year. Thomas has the versatility to play multiple spots and is a core special teamer. That's going to – Wanye Thomas is one of those guys that he's going to look like a back end of the roster guy. Yeah. But his roster spot, because of everything he does, is stronger than a lot of people who may be ahead of him on the depth chart. If Marquise Bell can cover, he might be your starter opposite hooker. My prediction. Ooh, that's your Chill Boys ballsy take of the day. Chillboys.com. Promo code STAR for 15% off. And then we got the specialist, Brian. Brandon Aubrey, Brian Anger, Trent Sieg at long snapper, and then CJ Goodwin, his yearly appearance on the roster. Um, but look, I, I think Todd's really good. I would be really surprised if Todd was more than 
three or four names off on this when when they roll out the roster um, mm-hmm. because Todd's very good at what he does and I, I think has a strong beat on it. So uh, check that out if you want. Google it uh, if, if you get the opportunity. Todd Archer's 53-man roster. You are listening to the Love the Star podcast. The Love the Star is an Odyssey podcast. You can find it on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Brian, it is now time for our Dean Julia Love the Star mailbag, where we turn things over to our dear, sweet listeners to get their thoughts, their comments, their questions, uh, talk about what they want to talk about a little bit. Uh, Let's go first to this question from John. He says, give us a way too early prediction (laughs) on a surprising player who is cut at the end of camp and also one surprise player making the final 53-man roster. Uh, Brian, I think maybe we kind of hinted around it. it Those offensive linemen, right? Those offensive – Bell, uh, Ball, well, let's go. Those are guys we – now, let me ask you this. Would you – would it be surprising if they cut a Doga? Yes, I would be surprised if they did that. Okay. Would you be surprised if they cut Awesome Richards? No, if, I, I, like, I, I don't if, think it's if, likely if ball or somebody like that showed up better. Right. Yeah, that's the only way I, mm-hmm. I think that awesome Richards has a leg up on those guys right now. But, it, you know, it's it's possible. But again, you're talking about sponsors and Mike Solari was here and helped evaluate awesome Richards and said, that's my guy. He was not right. here for Josh Ball, not here for Matt. Well, let's go. The, the name I have, if you want a a genuine Fahoko, I, I have Damone Clark. OK. If, if will if Damian Wilson shows up and they're like you know that's a veteran guy who we've got experience with in this building and he looks solid and Demon Clark it's just not clicking for him right I could see Clark potentially being a guy that would be on there I don't think it's likely but again if we're talking surprise cuts and if we're talking about surprise additions I'm gonna throw a name out there Brian and you're gonna hate hearing it because you you seem to roll your eyes every time I say his name you want to guess it go ahead David Durden. I'm not saying he's going to make it, but if you want to talk about a guy that I know they like, that the receiver position is kind of muddied and we don't have six a lot of wide receivers. On, it would probably have to be under six receiver situation. Yeah, is what it would have to be. I, I don't. I think don't think they can he, carry six. I don't think there's a way he pushes into five. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends on how much you view Cavante Turpin as multi-positional. I guess mm. in, in terms of how you're counting him. Could and they? Could they just? Counter- could they let Deuce Vaughn go? Um, I, I don't think that's out of the question. I think it's possible. Yeah. yeah. The, but they also, again, they are trying to find them different spots. They clearly they want do that every year, there. Bobby. Every no, no, I know. year. OTA I know. mini camp. You and I get excited about, oh, look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. And then we get to training camp. And it's like, it's like the goal line package last year in training camp we were watching. And all of a sudden it's like five shots of the goal line. They score four times. And then all of a sudden you're like, where's this creativity when they get to the season? Yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not saying that it's any sort of an indication that oh, they plan on using him as a weapon. I'm saying when they when we see receiver stuff, that's usually an indication to me that this organization is going. Can we find some way to keep him here? Sure. L- less than like yeah. we have a plan for him. Just like the hey Keith Smith, can we move him to fullback? Can we do yeah. something? Jamil Showers, can we throw him at safety? Like like they start trying to find ways to figure people out. So those would be my. Do you have a uh, a surprise addition to the roster? I you know what I like what you I I like what you did with the uh, I I kind of feel like that maybe Eric Scott might be a guy that puts somebody on the street. Sure, he, he had some practices in the OTAs where it was like he was kind of getting it, you know. And corner receiver, you got to stack so many good days in a row, and I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays. He didn't have a sponsor. He's pushing the rock up the hill right now. So, but in the OTAs, he didn't he didn't back down. You know, he was competitive. Nope. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if he found a way to get on this football team. Next question here from Matt Holler and Matt wants to know, uh, not that Dan Quinn didn't get the most out of Micah Parsons, but we saw some drop off towards season's end in the past few years. Do you think the hiring of Zimmer had anything to do with getting someone who could help Micah be more consistent slash a new voice in his ear? No. They hired the best guy that could be the best defensive coordinator for them. I don't think it had anything to do with Micah Parsons. I think they went out, Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones convinced 
Mike McCarthy, much like they convinced Mike McCarthy about Dan Quinn the first time around. There was no, I mean, there, Mike Zimmer competed against against Mike McCarthy. So at least there's that familiarity with the two. But this is a Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, hey, listen, here's a guy that will come. He'll, he'll keep the staff in place for the most part. He'll do what you want him to do. He just wants to coach. I, th- I don't think this had anything to do with Micah Parsons. I think this all had to do with he – that the Joneses have familiarity, McCarthy has familiarity, and they need a guy that's going to kick some ass, and he'll do that. I, I think I, I think that Mike Zimmer can absolutely bring something bigger and better out of Micah Parsons. I think Mike Zimmer can absolutely push Micah Parsons to be a better player. I will say this. If anything, I might – feel like it's the opposite that maybe the idea of Zimmer and Parsons working together and the potential friction that can create would have given them pause about hiring Mike rather than, Oh, this is a big reason to, and not even pause just made them way. Hey, there Mike's hard headed. Mike is hard headed. Mm-hmm. We heard Mike's comments at mini camp talking about, yeah, I've got my own ideas about what I want to do. Sure. That's going to naturally create friction. So that I would guess that it had to be something more the Cowboys had a way of like, is should we maybe not hire him because of how this might cause friction between our I, star the, players? I think the, it's the familiarity. It's yep. the total familiarity is what it is. Yeah, I, I think that that's completely fair. All right, uh, let's finish up, Brian, because it's been it's been two months. Let's finish up with one from Dean Julia. Okay, <laughs> uh, Dean Julia wants to know. Uh, what do you think Jalen Brooks has to do in camp much better than Tolbert to take the wide receiver three spot from? Because like Todd just mentioned there, Tolbert is the default third receiver right now, and Cowboys really believe in him. Is it just going to have to be an instance of, is it going to have to be incredibly obvious on the practice field that he's better than Tolbert? If it's close, do you think they're just going to default to Tolbert? No. They're, oh. going, they're going to play the more mentally tough guy. As a third receiver, you're going to be on the field quite a bit, and you're going to have to run some routes that are pretty tricky to run, and you're going to have to be tough. I personally feel like, and I liked Tolbert coming out of South Alabama. Mm -hmm. Brooks, to me, when you watch the South Carolina tape, you can see the toughness, the inside routes, special teams player and stuff like that. I think Brooks is a more mentally tough player. Hundred percent agree. I think that I think that Tolbert is probably more talented as a receiver. Mm-hmm. But this job, this third receiver job, is going to be won by the guy that has the best practices day after day after day after day. It's not going to be look good for two days, be bad for three. Whoever is the guy, and it, it'll show up. We'll yeah. see it. We'll see it in team period. We'll see it in one on ones. We'll see it in seven on seven. We'll see it when when they're out there and then those dudes run all day. They run all day, and it's easy to get sore. It's easy to get tired. It's easy to get down. The more mentally tough guy will win that job. That does it for us here today on the Love the Star podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We are getting very close to uh, in-season schedule. Uh, We're we're very close to three episodes a week. We will be out in Oxnard, California, uh, myself for the next 10 days, Brian longer than that. Um, And it'll be, we'll have all the training camp coverage for you. We'll, we'll be on CD watch. We'll be on Trey Lance watch. We'll, we'll be watching everything and be sure again to just send us in all your questions. If you have observations or things in particular, you'd like us to watch at camp. Send a tweet to us and just say, "Hey, um, you know, I've, I've got. A, I'm curious what this guy looks like. Could you maybe pay a little extra attention to him at practice? We'll try to come back with uh, some yeah. reports, some insight into those players. I will do, and I know I'll do my best, Bobby, to to in the morning get up and answer questions. So if you send questions to my account, I'll do my best to answer them. I know I wear people out with my responses." But if people are sending me questions, I'll do my best to get them answered for you. And also listen to our shows, you know, on 105.3 The Fan. Uh, you know, we're going to be out there. We're going to have interviews, talking to people, you know, observations, three live mics. You know, there's a lot of things we got going on. 
at training camp with our 105.3 The Fan coverage. So if you check that out and check out all our, our podcasts, uh, I think you'll you'll be up to snuff. And the common denominator there is that our 105 the fan coverage and our love the star coverage is united by chill boys. So chillboys.com promo code star 15% off. Thank you so much to chill boys for partnering with us for Brian brought us. I'm Bobby belt. We'll talk to you guys again later. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. If you want to see more of our videos, be sure to check out our playlist and let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media to stay up to date on our latest updates. Links are in the description. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.